So the only way I think he wins here is Cosmo. So the new season is upon us and we have a new card, MODOK. MODOK is actually a pretty decent card. I wouldn't say it's like as S tier as we saw with Zabu or Surfer, but MODOK is actually a pretty fun and interesting card. MODOK is a 5-8. On reveal, discard your hands. What we have here in this archetype is a hell archetype, but it can also be used in Apocalypse discard archetypes with Swarm and Collector and Hell Carrier, other cool stuff. I'm going to highlight this Hella deck here, however, which I think is my more successful deck. Uh, this one might feel a little bit more high rolly, but when it works, it works like crazy. Like you get so much power on your board, it's almost unbeatable, especially since the nerfs just went live. So Zabu and Surfer, out of here. Hello, Modok. So let's take a look at how this deck works. This deck runs the pretty normal Hella package. It has big cards, Giganto, Infinite, Death, Magneto. With those four cards, Death is uh, a lot of people say, why don't you swap it out for like Hulk or something else that's 12 power that's more playable. Uh, death is a protection when you play Lady Sif out. Uh, it'll discard Death guaranteed instead of your Hella. So that you want to end up playing that Lady Sif out in case you didn't get Invisible Woman. So Invisible Woman, you play out uh to try and put your discard cards behind so that they don't reveal and end up discarding your hella uh, so the ultimate combo with this deck is playing out invisible woman into modok into hella you only need three cards to win with this deck and if you're able to get that off without your opponent cosmoing that lane or stealing the invisible woman's ability with rogue or enchantressing it you will fill up your board with your entire hand which is actually kind of crazy with these big cards that come out there are a couple backup plans so you have morbius which will interact with all the discards that happen which just becomes a big card if you ever end up modocking in the game this is like a 2 8 2 10 a lot of the times kind of crazy you have the backup as ghost rider as well so if you discard a card and you don't end up drawing hella to bring anything back you can at least bring back the one card with ghost rider and sometimes if you discard hella Ghost Rider can bring back Hella to bring back the rest of your cards as well. Uh, and then you have Hellcow, which is just one of the only discard cards that discards multiple cards other than Modok now. And then just the best card in the game, Arrow. So Arrow, you can end up playing out uh, just by itself to manipulate the locations a little bit better. And also if you bring it back with Hella, it can really disrupt the last turn play by your opponent because anything that they tried to put into the lane that they needed it in gets pulled to whoever Arrow gets resummoned from Hella. So it is a little bit interesting. Uh, I like this deck a lot. Let's get into some games and see how it plays out. All right, first game here. Uh, pretty much the whole strategy around this is going to be trying to get that Invisible Woman, uh, Modok, Hella combo, which is a little bit tougher to get sometimes. Uh, you have to first draw all three of those cards, and then you have to make sure that your opponent does not do anything to stop that from happening. Uh, playing out Morbius is just always a good turn two play. Uh, playing it on turning range is a little bit weird because we're gonna get a rock there and maybe we wanna build up the Invisible Woman uh, lane here just in case there's nothing on the right. So we're gonna go ahead and put Morbius on the right just so we can leave this open for the Invisible Woman, Modoc plus uh, Hell of Lane in the middle in case this is some sort of location that would block us from playing there. Okay, next up we have Sif, and luckily we drew Death, which will make it so that we can play Sif out. Otherwise, we would have to take the gamble on either Hell or Giganto. So now we can end up playing Lady Sif into Death, and then since we have Titan now, uh, we can play out like Giganto potentially, uh, which is kind of risky because we have to play into the Danger Room. But we can see what other six drops we draw, since we do have two more in our deck. Like, if we draw Infinite, we might just, like, skip, play Infinite, then play Arrow, or Hella. Or we drew Modok. We still don't have Invisible Woman, so... Unfortunately, we're probably not playing Modok this game, unless we're just playing Hella into Modok, which might actually be the play. Because Hella will resummon Death, then get Modok, which will give us all the power on Morbius, plus eight more power which is a good play in general. So now on this turn, we have two kind of options. We could take a gamble with Hellcow, which is a 50-50 to discard Hella, or we could just play Hella out to get the death back. Uh, they played Zabu, which just got nerfed, so he can't do anything too crazy. It looks like they might be playing out Dinos or something. I think I'm just going to play Hella. I kind of want to play it to the left, but I think left or mid is fine either way. We're probably going to play Modok on the right, so I think I'm going to play Hell on the left. Hope it summons Death to the left as well. Love to see. There is a Dino. He might get shot. He did get shot. That's probably a snap, but I'm not going to snap just because I want to play this game out for you guys. 
So again, we do have a couple options here. Um, we could Gigant to the left, which is risky with the Danger Room. Uh, he does have Sunspot mid. He has Zabu, so he can play two four drops. Uh, we have Morbius over here. Morbius gains plus eight if we do this, so it really depends on what four drops he ends up playing. He did copy our Giganto or our Hela or our Arrow uh, with the White Queen, so he could just Arrow us here. Uh, we could just play Modok here or here and try and win that way. I think it's safer to play Modok mid, because then you'd have to play in the Danger Room and right to win, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Hopefully not Sean. Not Sean, okay. We won. And he got shot in the danger room again, so... That's a 3 for 3 danger room. And not what you'd expect. Alright, so our opening hand here... <clears throat> we have none of our three main combo cards. We do have Sif Death. So, hopefully we can draw Hellcow or Hella. Uh, sorry, Ghost Rider or Hella. We can top deck Invisible Woman in the next three turns. That'd also be good. So Sif here always discards death, it being nine power. Guy's playing the new Zabu, got it on turn two. Sinister London is actually kind of nasty with this deck. Uh, we actually can Sif twice, which will kill our Infinite and Death, and then Ghost Rider will come out. So I can Snap here, which I'll go ahead and do it. Um, just even though for this video I usually do not Snap on these turns, but since he is ahead here, I doubt he will leave the game. Uh, considering they played a turn 2 Zabu. Because normally I'll avoid Snapping to be able to get the full game to explain it to you guys, but here I'm pretty confident that they will stay in. Double Darkhawk. Kind of expected, but we get an Infinite and a Death back, and we can copy a Magneto as well, which can pull the Darkhawks around if we really need to. Hmm. That's a little bit troublesome. <clears throat> so we are winning. I kind of do want to play the Magneto on the final turn. So I think I'm going to play Arrow over here, which will, since we have priority, will pull all his cards over here. I think this is better. It does give him an Arrow on the final turn, so if he ends up beating us somehow, which he did not. We do have the final turn Magneto, which is good. Um, since we're already winning here by a lot, I would like the Magneto to go mid to pull anything over there. So I'm going to play the Widow's Bite over here, since there's no chance of him winning over here. I think this should be enough to win. He's probably going to Rock Slide. He can play two cards out. We put, we go first though, so Magneto should pull these two cards to the middle, because he'll play two cards here and try and get the copies. Mystique and Darkhawk will get pulled over, so we'll just be facing Rock Slide and one other card. So we should win this game, get an easy eight cubes, and we didn't even have to do our Modoc combo. Oh, I forgot about Moon Girl and Zabu, which is a possibility, which is still mostly okay. Shuri was unexpected. Oof. Um, Victory. It's not Rock Slide. Still an 8-cuber. Alright, we've drawn Modok. We need Invisible Woman. We have Collapse Mine with Death. Which is really good. Um, we can play Death out. We might as well. Since we could potentially have a Sif into Ghost Rider into Modok game. So I think it makes sense to play it out here. We do have a chance of discarding Hella here. I think the 1 and 3 is worth taking. Even if we do discard Hella, we still have many options. You don't need Hella to win this. Yeah, and there goes Hello. Remember, we still have Ghost Rider as well. As a card that's playable. So I have to play out the Widow's Bite, unfortunately. It is someone playing Zabu Darkhawk with the new Zabu, so... 
I think we have the advantage here because the new Zabu uh, is not nearly as good as the old Zabu, I would assume. I haven't seen it played too much. Moon Girl. Borg. All right, we did top that Ghost Rider. Um, Ghost Rider only brings back Hella. Modok, unfortunately, discards our whole hand. So it is probably better to play Ghost Rider here. Uh, it's just going to bring back Hella. Hella's going to bring back nothing. And then we play out Magneto on the final turn, which I think would be fine. I'm going to go ahead and snap here. I think snapping is our best option. Uh, it does give a, our opponent the option to retreat. We already know our whole game plan. I've already shown you guys enough. So if they aren't feeling confident here, they do have a double buffed Darkhawk. There's Rockside, so I'm expecting Darkhawk on this final turn. You can play Darkhawk and one other card. Darkhawk Mystique is a possibility. So he has six power. So I think I'm going to play, unfortunately if I play over here as Darkhawk Mystique is absolutely bonkers. We probably do lose this to Darkhawk Mystique. If I play over here, there is a chance, yeah we lose to Darkhawk Mystique every time. It could just be double Darkhawk as well. Oh man, he played a million cards. Why did it not pull the Zabu? Oh, Zabu's two now. How did I forget? Alright, well, we won by one. Did not have Dark Hog. Easy game, easy win. Okay, so we have Lady Sif and Death. So that will be an easy discard. We have Morbius, which is a great card. Uh, Avenger Compounds mean we have to play... Our Modok there on turn 5. If we want to play Modok, since it is on turn 5, all cards must be played here. So we're going to have to play Invisible Woman to this lane if we end up drawing it. So in that case, we are going to play it not there for other cards. That's the main is actually really good with this deck. If we can get Hella off or Ghost Rider onto Death's Domain. We're discounting Death at the very least, so if we top deck one of those two cards... I think Ghost Rider Hella, there is a chance we can get a card on there. There's a guaranteed chance with Ghost Rider. I mean, doesn't get much better than them playing Maximus for us. Although Asgard is kind of a card. Uh, since he played Maximus, we're only going to have one card left in our deck at the end. So there's a very high chance we draw Hella. So I'm going to play Invisible Woman mid. And then I'm going to play Modok underneath it. I feel like we're about to get, get Enchantress, which is fine actually because we don't have Hella in hand. So if he Enchantresses us this turn, it's actually completely fine. No Enchantress. Very surprising. Unless he runs Cosmo, I think he loses since we're going to pull back Arrow, Magneto, Infinite, Ghost Rider, and Hellcow. And we get a 10 buff on our Morbius. So the only way I think he wins here is from playing Cosmo. Well, he won the game. Good job. Good job. All right, we have all three of our cards. Hopefully that means that we can play all three of these out. Hopefully we don't get Cosmode. We didn't. Hellcow was not a great card to have discarded and retrieved, so I think this is fine. All right, Morbius in the middle is actually the safest play here. We get it on Onslaught Citadel, double the value. Fire Club is fine. We're going to play Invisible Woman into Hellfire Club. We could also wait one turn to play Invisible Woman. It does help stop Cosmos and other cards from coming down because a lot of times they don't want to play um, an inefficient turn on turn five and six to play out the Cosmo. However, as we just saw, it does happen. 
Okay, so we could play Ghost Rider into here. It's just four more power into here. We're not gonna have any other play. We could play Ghost Rider into another lane, but it gives him more information. I'm not quite sure what, it looks like just some sort of death deck. If it is a death arrow deck, we could get arrowed on the last turn, which would cause some issues. He would have to be able to beat um, all this power over here, which is a decent amount of power. Okay, so we do have death. Here's the problem. He has priority. He played wave on the last turn. There is a chance that he's playing Death Arrow. So this is 12 power. We have under here 11 more, which puts us at 13. So we are winning over here. If he plays Death Arrow, we actually do... We're going to play the Death Out over here in case he's Galactus. Um, he could only play Galactus there. So we do beat Galactus. However... Death Arrow. I think we do beat Death Arrow because we have 13 and we'll win mid with the Morbius discarding uh, 3, which will give us uh, actually 4 per card, right? So 12 value. Yeah, should be fine. Alright, just She-Hulk. We just completely dominate here. Here it comes! Modok! We only discard 3 cards because we play out the death, but still good. Hella bringing them all back. Magneto pulling the death in the wave. Actually, too much value. It all went mid. 51 in the middle, 12 on the left, 19 on the right. Victory, Victory is ours. That's the combo you want to get. Uh, GG. He did not have the arrow. He did have She-Hulk death. Arrow would have been still fine, I think. I think we had all of our bases covered. Uh, just the fact that death was playable there with the wave. Uh, kind of saved us in case he was doing any sort of shenanigans. Um, lucky for us, we had that. But yeah, death, that's another reason why death is pretty good in this deck is because sometimes you're able to just play it out for cheap if you're playing against a deck that runs uh, like the death wave combo. Also, decks that just run anything that kills things can discount it. If you end up hitting Lamentus or Collapse Mine, it's able to be played out. Uh, yeah, that's the deck. Thanks everyone for watching. Tune in next time for another deck overview. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Do you like this deck? Do you have another Modoc deck? What do you guys think? All right, see you guys.